Good evening, Tampa Bay Kite Jammers. This is meteorologist Shay Gibson with iKiteSurf, Wind Alert, and all those other crazy apps and products from Weatherflow you know about already. Uh, we're going to be talking tonight about the wind forecast for this weekend and this Tampa Bay kite invasion coming up this weekend as well. I'm going to go ahead and put myself on the corner here. Here's the website under Elite Water Sports. You can find it here with the information, with registration. There's all kinds of really good sponsors and all kinds of good things Aaron has talked to you about already, and I'll let him go into more detail about that so I won't take his thunder. But then again, you know what, Aaron? The thunder's mine. I'm the weatherman, okay? I'm the weatherman. But beside that, let's get back to the forecast. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the uh, visible satellite imagery. And what we show here, and let me get my draw tool out, is a front that is situated just along South Florida, maybe towards Central Florida, but mainly uh, over the Keys and uh, up towards Fort Myers area. And this front has a little bit of moisture dragging along it. Now, from the, from the north, we have northerly winds from high pressure coming down around the top of this boundary. The other thing we got to start looking at is a tropical system, Invest 91L down here. It could become gamma in the next 24 to 36 hours, and it's going to take a track similar to like this and maybe even scoot on over this way in the Gulf. And we've got to really watch this because it can matter on the day of what the event's going to be. Reason being, because we don't want a lot of moisture and messiness to come up into the Florida area in Tampa Bay during the event. And so we're going to kind of zero in on the day, and, and this is really going to be important. Um, if we look at the, the current winds right now, we have northerly winds. We're going to use Tampa Bay Cut J. I know there's other sensors in the area, but we can see the pattern of northerly winds. So we have cool air advection process going on. What that is is cool air diving down over the bay. We have heat fluxing. So the cooler radiation processes in the morning allow for stronger winds in the morning, which is why you see that. And it lulls out during the daytime because the heat pattern does not allow that that cool mixing to the surface very well but when, when the temperatures start to back down in the late afternoon evening hours we see those those speeds come back up and so that's what we're going to be expecting as we head into this weekend when high pressure builds up to the north again and we see let me get the forecast values out here we see a lot of agreement and the model runs for um, for this direction of wind the northeast winds and that's good to see this many models in, in agreement with the direction wind. So we know we can lock that in for Saturday. The question is going to be the speeds. Now, the model performance doesn't always reflect exactly what's going to happen here. So we see kind of a normalized view. We know that in the morning we may get a surge. And then in the late afternoon, probably a better surge for the northeast wind. So um, I would bet, I would hedge my bets that with the gradient starting up in the morning, we may not get that much of a, of a surge up into the teens. But I think by mid to late afternoon, we may be looking at mid to upper teens, and a lot of times these models underperform. They don't really come up as high as the model value showed earlier, and so we can we have that to depend on. So let's go ahead and take a look at the um, the surface map, and here's the front I was talking about. It's a little further south over the Miami area in the Keys, and as we go into time, we see another front dropping down. This is going to squash those northerly winds eventually. It's a weak front, not much moisture associated with it. If we go back to the to the satellite. Imagery, we have mid to upper level cirrus clouds stretching out across the area, so it's really relatively dry air. Uh, in fact, if we look at the low level water vapor imagery, we can see a lot of that dry air just over the Tampa Bay area. Uh, the upper cirrus is sort of shading a little bit, but the northerly wind is pushing down below those clouds down to Tampa at least. Uh, so that, that helps to see what's going on in the future uh, for the next couple of days as this next front drops down. What's going to happen is this front's going to drop down, it's going to stall, and it's going to actually slow down. As we get into Friday morning, tomorrow morning, it's going to stall, and then it's going to actually go down and join the other front and become one with that. So this is where the moisture starts to lift back up as that Invest 91L I just showed you uh, down in the, um, the Western Caribbean starts to lift a little bit to the north. And as we do that, we see the moisture kick up into Sunday. So the, the moisture drops off of this map as we get into Sunday afternoon. But let's go ahead and take a look at the GFS, the precip and moisture. I'm going to zero down into the eastern U.S. You know what? First of all, I'm going to show the uh, the 10 meter winds and where I'm where I'm talking about this high pressure is coming from. So let's bring it back to zero hours. Run it forward as we get into Saturday. Saturday morning. This is the player that I'm talking about right here. This this high pressure. This is where this northeast wind is going to come from. It's actually driving a northeast wedge down the east coast, down the southeast, and all the way down across Tampa Bay. So we always know that clockwise rotation goes around high pressure. We know this northeast wedge is going to set up based on Appalachian high pressure centralized over West Virginia and peel down the coast all the way down into Florida and across the peninsular Florida area. So with that said, um, the other thing we're going to look at 
is let's go ahead and look at the preset moisture drop down to the golf and so one thing we got to start looking for is moisture so we have a pretty good slug of moisture that's going to be caused from easterly trades really pulsing through this is what's going to give this this low pressure some spin especially with high pressure on top we have spin that way then we also have low pressure trying to spin this way and this is what may be able to get that storm to a named system i don't think it's a threat to the gulf coast at this time but we have to wait and see what happens but when we get a surge of easterly trade winds into this area we also get moisture that pulls up around these lows and up along it this low pressure is going to be pulling low i'm sorry lots of moisture up into this area so the point of me saying all this is that as we get into saturday things look drier look what happens when we get into sunday here's sunday saturday afternoon gfs has a smattering of a shower not very much at all if any uh, i think the dry air from the northeast will still keep that suppressed to the south but as we go into sunday this is where the concern becomes because those winds start to switch from the east and then eventually they veer to the east southeast and you get that moisture piling up with it and you may end up having a total washout or a really messy situation for the race on Sunday. You can see there GFS is really uh, making it pretty messy over the area. So um, in my opinion, I think that the, the best call is going to be uh, for Saturday afternoon. And uh, that's, that's just my opinion. I'll let Aaron make the decision there. I mean, we never know. These models may adjust by tomorrow. We may find out that the morning might be actually better than the afternoon. But I think the gradient will build in the morning, lull out, and then come back even stronger tomorrow evening. So here's the, uh, the air temperature for Saturday. It's a pretty comfortable 79 degrees, maybe a little one mil top and you should be fine. The wire temperatures are around 81 degrees. We want to take a quick look there and all these little bells and whistles, man. I tell you, these products are so awesome. Uh, wire temps 83 degrees in St. Petersburg. And then as we get over to Clearwater on the ocean side, 82.3 degrees. So you have 79 degree Temperatures outside, 82.3 degrees wire temperature on the water. So it looks like a pretty comfortable day overall. Saturday looks like the driest, cleanest day overall for the forecast for the Tampa Bay area. So I hope everybody has a wonderful event. I wish I could be there to join. I'm going to definitely plan to be there for the next year's event um, as things in life tend to happen. But uh, um, everybody have a good time. Stay safe. Pay attention to the instructions. Let Aaron give you the best guidance of all for this whole event. And you guys have a good time. Have a good night. Thanks for watching.